So, hi everyone. So, I'm uh, Evangelic from Parrot. So, maybe you know Parrot from uh, the drone that we are doing, the AR drone uh, that is running Linux actually. And also, of course, the headphones uh, that you saw uh, earlier today. So we're doing mostly uh, Linux embedded device, uh, devices these days. Um, we're doing uh, multimedia uh, products. We're doing also um, an infotainment uh, platform for the automotive world. And so today, I'd like to talk to you about uh, really a small and simple tool that we developed at Parrot, just to see uh, LTTNG traces in a different way. And this is also an excuse to, to speak about uh, LTT, which is a really a fantastic tool. And GTK Wave also. So, for, for those of you who don't know, LTT uh, was developed quite a while ago now, in uh, 1999. And uh, it consisted in a kernel patch, a module, and uh, also user land daemon and tools. And uh, the point was to collect traces, uh, events, uh, like interrupts, context switches, oh, sorry, a bit is missing, page faults, system calls, etc. And also you could collect uh, user space events. Uh, after after the, the trace is collected, you can view it in a, in a tool called LTTV. So this is the native tool that you can use with LTT to view the traces. And uh, I speak about LTT, but really I should be talking about LTTNG, since, since this is the new name uh, of LTT. So, uh, recently, I mean recently, like two years ago, there was a new version of LTT called LTT 2.0. So, uh, this version had a number of new features and uh, maybe uh, the most important one for many people was that uh, no kernel patch was uh, needed anymore. And also, uh, LTT people switch to a new trace format, which is called CTF, Common Trace Format. And so, uh, as, as, as I understand it, right now, LTTV support is uh, still a work in progress to see the latest trace format that LTTNG provides. Um, an alternative is to use the Eclipse plugin, LTTNG. And uh, one point that is important for us because we are we had already developed some stuff for LTTNG 0.x is that the new version LTTNG 2.x events are really different so you cannot use the old tools to uh, watch and to to visualize the new LTTNG traces okay so this is uh, what LTTV looks like basically you can see uh, that you have information about processes here. Each line is a process. On the top window, you can see also uh, interrupts, event, events. And this on the bottom here is the raw trace with uh, all the information. This is a, a, s a snapshot of the LTTNG perspective. So this is a fairly recent, I, I think. And uh, well, to be honest, I haven't used it uh, very much, so I really can't comment about it, but it looks really nice. And so, what is GTK Wave? Because uh, the thing is, we're using GTK Wave to view LTTNG traces. It's, uh, it's a GTK Plus based waveform viewer. So it's mainly used to view uh, electronic waveforms. So it's uh, mostly used, I, I think, in microelectronics, in the microelectronics field. And uh, it handles the, the standard file formats that, that are used in that industry, like uh, Verilog and stuff like that. And so it's, it's able to handle quite large traces. And uh, th the nice thing about GTK Wave it's, I is that it's quite easy to generate a trace that is uh, supported by the tool, so in the native input format of the tool. So this is how you can view uh, traces in GTK Wave, you can see that you have some uh, digital signals that can take value 0 and 1. You can also have uh, numerical values here, like hexadecimal, FFFF. So you can also print, like the previous uh, 
slide showed, you can print um, analog, analog data. Okay, and so now um, I will present just uh, uh, the the tool that we developed. So it's called LTT to LXT, LXT, and so the thing the the idea is to parse an LTT trace and generate an L LXT file. So in uh, more precisely, you get two files because you get one file with the signals, and you get a second file for the layout of the signals. I mean the ordering of the signals. Uh, our tool supports mostly the uh, legacy LTTNG 0.x traces, and we're we're trying now to support the, the latest format, which is uh, very alpha for the moment. And uh, a nice th thing also is that we can uh, you take advantage of uh, of uh, kernel symbols to transform uh, addresses appearing in uh, LTT trace data into uh, symbol into symbols into functions and line numbers. So why did we do this? I mean, uh, we already have LTTV, or, and now maybe the Eclipse plugin. Well, at the time when we started working on it, uh, LTTV support was uh, not what it is today. And also, we already had this tool used for doing real-time traces on systems other than Linux. So that's why we, are, we were using a GTK Wave at that moment. And GTK Wave has nice uh, features. So this is not a replacement. We're not trying to replace LTTV or any other tool or the Eclipse plugin. It's just a complement. And uh, for some problems and some issues, it's quite nice. Uh, so OK, so I'm very sorry because uh, I don't know why this is a uh, cut. Uh, I'm trying to fix it. Just a moment. No luck. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so uh, uh, we have uh, two versions of the tool. The older one takes uh, LTTNG 0.x trace. With the use of LTTV, we dump a text representation of the trace. Then we inject kernel symbols. This part is optional. And then we process it and generate the LXT trace. The other new process here is to do the same, but instead we uh, directly go from the CTF trace, use the new tool LTTNG to LXT, and with a library called libbabel trace, we can decode and generate also the trace. So, and this is, oh, great. Now it doesn't work. Yeah, okay. So this is what it what it looks like. Um, here you have a, a certain number of lines. Uh, each line represents a process. So I don't know if many of you have ever used LTT, because LTT is a really nice tool. It enables you to uh, see the system running in real time. So we use it at Parrot to try to solve some uh, uh, real time issues or some audio gap issues, for instance. And I think it's also a very valuable tool to learn how the system works and to see if uh, your, your software is really running and behaving as expected, or maybe as not expected. OK. So maybe now I'm trying to do a little demo. Hopefully it works. OK. Um, OK, so here is, here is what it looks like. As you can see, on the top area, you have a CPU load. And you have a certain number of lines. Each line corresponds to an interrupt. So you, here you can see the interrupt events. And the nice thing is that I'll try to do this with the, maybe the microphone stand. Yeah, some stunt. OK, let's do this. It's really nice because you can easily zoom 
in the trace, zoom in and out. Now you're supposed to say, wow. wow. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. <laughs> so, uh, uh, okay. So, so, I'd like to explain, just uh, take a few moments to explain how, how the information is displayed. So, I, I talked about the interrupts here. Then uh, uh, here you have memory management lines. So uh, memory faults information, page faults. I think you all know what page a page fault is. It's when the system has to respond to a, a demand. So here you can see a write page fault, and you can see the address. So it's, it's quite convenient. And, uh, and the rest of the trace here is, uh, is actually processes. OK, so you have a lot of processes here. I'll, I'm going to select just one process uh, at random. Let's do, for instance, this one. OK. And here you can see that we're using different colors. So actually, we kind of uh, hijacked the uh, states that are supported in the tool for electric si electro electronic signals, like uh, undefined high impedance uh, x or value 0 or 1 just to represent state processes. So high impedance means actually this, the process is not running. It's the yellow line here. Then when you get to the blue part, it means that with a W, like waiting, it means that the process is ready to run, but is, is it, it has not been uh, scheduled yet. So it's just waiting to, to run. Here the red part means uh, the process is actually having the CPU is running in kernel mode. And then here, it switched to user mode. So actually, it came back from a system call, system call most probably. And then it, it went into another system call. So uh, we can just, just zoom in and out and see what's happening on every process. And also, a nice feature is that uh, here I have this process here called uh, this thread here, uh, 832. So I'm going to try to find uh, additional information so we try not to display everything at once on the screen because uh, viewing LTT traces uh, efficiently is all about um, selecting the information, I think. So here's just, uh, I just selected, oh, sorry. Yeah, just selected the, the information related to this process. And now if I zoom in, I can see what was going on with my, uh, with my process. Actually, I came. I, I woke up from a select syscall. Uh, the select syscall returned a value, zero, so probably a timeout, and then I went again into a, a, a select, right? Okay. Uh, there are other interesting lines here that you can see. Uh, the, the mode in which the color is running, so syscall, IRQ, user mode, so it's a global uh, view. Here it's, we are running on a, a uniprocessor platform. It's a small ARM9 processor. Uh, okay. What else can I show you? Yeah, maybe this one here. So this, this guy here, this process, which I move up, is doing a uh, is doing some uh, I two C transfer I think so here also you can see you can try to understand the system so this is why I think it's a valuable tool for learning and understanding how the the Linux kernel works and how the system works here you can see clearly that uh, when your I two I two C so I two C M is for I two C master I two C M interrupt ends. The I2C actually caused uh, uh, the waking up of this tuner notification process, right? And th and so the process went into probably doing a reading. So I tried to see 904, get the information. 904, let's go. Yeah. So yeah, it was a read. So we were re we're reading on the I2CM interface. So we can see how long it takes. Is it hugging the CPU? Is it going well? How how much how many bytes do we read, and then we're going into nano sleep. Oh, sorry, you can see it. Here, you can see it. 
Ok. Uh, yeah, now I'd like to sh show you some other interesting bits. Oh, so let's let's go into in full view here. So this is actually a trace of a product that is running uh, Android. It's uh, like like a, a car radio running Android. And, and the, the, this was uh, one of the earliest uh, software version. So we had a few issues, and notably we had uh, with the audio issues. And now you can see here that uh, we have really impressive patterns here of execution. Oh, sorry. Try to select maybe this one here, like this. Yeah. So you can see here uh, how the, the software behaves. So this is kind of interesting because uh, you can uh, you can verify how the, the the different thread. This is a heavy threaded process, so you can see the the link and the chaining and the execution of the different threads, and it goes uh, li uh, like a cycle. And you can try to understand how how the system is working. So, uh, yeah, I went to the guy who did the the software and, and asked him, "This is this normal? Is this is this normal? All, all these uh, threads happening, all these context switches." And say yeah, yeah, this is great. This is what I was expecting. Yeah. <laughs> Not normal. So, the worst thing actually is that, as you can see here, this uh, nice uh, chaining of uh, processes causes some processes to wait quite a long time, right? And uh, going further, uh, there is a. I don't know if you can see it. Ah, that's a shame. Okay, <laughs> try to zoom in. Yeah. So here at the bottom, there's a, this process called surface flinger. Yeah, it is responsible for uh, displaying uh, a graphics on Android, and here uh, it's doing an animation, just a scrolling animation, and you can see here that it, it is stopped. So this is quite basic, but the reason actually is that. Those nice processes here are running with real-time scheduling, actually, with a sched RR round robin. Uh, so this was one of the earlier software version. Um, that's why this was happening. But it's very easy with the, this tool with LTT uh, to, to to understand immediately what's what's going on because usu you, uh, usually the guy uh, a guy comes to you and says, "Yeah, I have audio gaps on my system. I don't understand. Everything is going well." So this is quite easy to to make a diagnostic. Okay. Then I'd like to show you a second trace. It's the same system, but different issue. So now, it's a quite heavily loaded system. S still running Android. It's, th it's the same platform as before. And now, something really strange is happening. So you have as you can see here, the uh, maybe you could don't see it, but the, the audio chain that I showed you before, now it's not running like a tight pack of context switches. It's more spread out because it's not running in uh, in real time anymore. So it's leaving out some some CPU for the uh, surface flinger, right? But still, it's uh, quite a mess. Everybody's running here, and uh, here you can see this uh, nice pattern here. So what was going on actually is that on the product there is a button, there is a, a rotating button. And the fact was that each time the button was rotating, a, a new thread was created. And so this is just one flick of the button that you can see here. So yeah, it's quite funny sometimes to investigate issues. Uh, and uh, also what I want to say about this trace is that OK, I can understand what's going on here. But if you look also at the other processes here, you can see. I don't know if you can read here, but maybe you can see binder thread. So if you know Android, you probably know about uh, the, a system called binder, which is the, the uh, IPC mechanism used in Android. And uh, the thing is, when you see something like that, which I call the binder storm, uh, this is caused by too many calls ma being made and uh, especially by the, the, th the threads that are created, uh, it's very difficult to debug because uh, it's hard to know now 
why these binder threads are called and what they're doing. You need to have some, j some context coming from the upper Java layers. So it's, uh, yeah, it's much harder. Still interesting. OK. Oh, over. Just a few minutes? Just two minutes? OK. One last example, and then I'm done. OK. Uh, look at this one. I have a little quiz for you. Just I know, this is this is done on a re on a recent system, and this is done with LTT 2.x traces. So this is not as complete as the the traces that I showed you before. And uh, here, basically, a process is crashing. So okay, it's crashing. Big deal, no big deal. But when we saw the trace, yeah, we saw a very strange pattern that I'll tr try to show you. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can see it. Can you see that? So it looks like uh, every process, every thread in a particular process is running uh, each one at a time until all the process, uh, all the threads are di died. died. Uh, try to, um, just a second. Yeah, you see it? So in your opinion, if I tell you that this is a, a process that crashed in Android, what do you think happened? Out of memory? No, not really. <laughs> Schedule dies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, understandably. No, it's not that, but okay, just a, a small hint. Just a small hint. You see the process very active here? Debugger D. Sorry? Yeah. Well yeah, kind of. Actually what's going on here is the debugger D processes. Is doing is taking control of the process. Is doing p trace attach and detach on each thread in order to dump the, the contents of the process, the things you see on the log cat output when the process is crashes. And since this since this is a huge process, it takes like 10 seconds to p trace all the, the threads and then they die. But yeah, it's quite surprising. Okay. Okay, and uh, just to finish, just to finish, uh, if you're interested, we have a small GitHub uh, repository with the tool. It's really no big deal. This, it's a small C tool, and well, okay. So thank you. Do you have any question on this one? Oh, so we have two questions. Um, why uh, did you choose LTTNG uh, uh, instead of, for example, uh, using ftrace since it's in the kernel? Uh, with ftrace, you have uh, a visual visualization tool called the Pi Time Chart. Yeah. And have you heard of it? I don't know. Yeah, we are, we are, yeah, yeah, I've heard of uh, ftrace, but not used it very much. So, yeah, we, I need to look also at uh, ftrace. Yeah. Okay. No question? I, I, I don't know, maybe ftrace is, uh, I don't know for how many years uh, did ftrace exist. I, uh, yeah, I don't know. Actually, this tool this tool was uh, developed at Parrot like uh, six years ago. So, yeah. so um, these were a, a funny Android uh, examples. Um, I mean, are you also using new Android and seeing them too there? Just am I using Android? Yeah, new Android and and seeing a similar fu funny pattern. You mean uh, this, this comes from uh, actual actual Parrot products? So, uh, do, do you mean uh, do I see the same patterns today on the, our products or? Yeah, on, on new uh, Android. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the it's uh, really the same. But uh, we try not to reproduce the same patterns that you see here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's quite uh, actually our our software code base, uh, especially the the DSP uh, audio DSP code base, was actually developed on a on a real time operating system. 
a small real-time operating system. So when we switched to uh, Linux with Android, we kept for some time the uh, real-time scheduling. And then we, we saw what you s just saw. So. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks.